Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to take the 450 millimeter Edgun Leshy 2 with the Valkyrie Showput handguard out shooting at range. Um, this gun I set up custom for a client who's going to be really stoked on it. I told him I promised I would check it for accuracy and it performs well. As you can see here I'm running an RMR red dot with a 2 MOA so that I can use a long range scope for 200 meters and then the RMR is going to be used for close in. We'll do a little bit of running and gunning and a little bit of target shooting at 100 yards and I hope you enjoy the video. So let's go ahead and get right after it and not delay. Not a bad group, once I kind of figured out the wind. Um, give you an idea. This is, let me pull the gun here, so I'll shoot myself. That's about a human hand. And uh, take a look at the pellets here. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Um, and we'll take a look at our shooting position here. See it? back there all right you know while I'm walking with you guys here um, I gotta tell you this is such a cool gun I don't even know how to describe an air gun like this except that it's kind of like a AR-15 um, that's so modular I mean right now I'm running the 450 barrel 25 caliber and it's um, shooting oh, about 960 with the Kings and about 880 with the 34 grain. The 34 grain definitely outperformed the Kings so I'm totally stoked on that because that means a lot more horsepower like 62 foot-pounds or something like that 
and uh, really the setup that I'm rolling here and I'll show you guys in a second lets you go long range and then you know totally close range with the offset red dot RMR so let's set up some 20 yard little guys here and see how we do guys just want to give you some final thoughts on the weapon system here as I adjust my camera so you can see everything so what's really cool about this Leshy 2 is that it's so modular you can make it anything you want you want a small little backpack gun no problem 250 this one here is in 30 caliber it's a little hammer perfect truck gun sit in your lap allegedly um, put in a backpack I mean if you throw in like a vertex ready pack 2.0 you can absolutely uh, have this thing almost as an EDC. And it's super accurate. Paired with the Stalker, it's almost perfect. Uh, maybe just a couple little things I'd like to change in the Stalker, but other than that, I mean, really, this weapon system's almost perfect for an EDC small little packable gun. Then you have option two, which is like a medium. So this one here is the Shellist uh, 350. And I am running the aluminum handrail with a, uh, in a 450 configuration with an RMR offset 45 degree. You'll see that on most of my rifles, and I'll explain why in a second. Uh, this particular model, I don't sell this. This is a Trigicon 1-8 to uh, AccuPower. I ripped this off of one of my old three guns, and um, I kind of like it. It's got a throw switch. One of the things that's a, kind of a negative is that it doesn't have a parallax but I don't care because I'm running in something in close and I'll explain why that is um, in a second the other setup I have on this is I'm running a Magpul I think it's an mp3 sling this is a two-point single point sling now I'm not a huge fan of single point slings because I don't like the way that they um, hang the gun hangs so I'm, I'm a fan of a two-point 
but what's cool about it is you don't have to choose you can put an M lock quick detach on one of your rails then as I slide this forward here the back of the Magpul has a nice little quick detach so you can run this as a single double if you wanted to um, I prefer to run it as a double but what a great hunting gun I mean you could go all day hiking with this thing uh, you got plenty of rail space if you want to do night hunting um, a place for a light place for a laser if you wanted to a night vision setup there's plenty of rail space just completely awesome almost like not even the same gun that's what's so rad about this system i'm just totally in love with it um so that's you know kind of a medium range and then i kind of set up for what i shot you saw me shooting out there was a long range jobber now on this long range gun what i'm setting up here is the show put 450 with a 450 25 caliber barrel. I left it all at factory settings. As you saw, the speed was ripping out of this thing. Totally uh, sick. This is a Striker first focal plane, a Delta Striker first focal plane. It parallaxes at about 45 yards and um, a totally awesome field of view. Great long range setup. And again, I'm running the offset RMR and I'll explain why I do that instead of running one on top. Um, but one thing I want to talk about is air gunners are always so obsessed with. What's the parallax? Does it parallax to five yards? Now, that some scopes do that, but I'll tell you, you know, there are no free lunches in this world. If you pick a scope that parallaxes at five to ten yards, what you're giving up is the depth of field. It becomes very shallow. So it's then a lot more focus picky. Some field target shooters like stuff that focuses down yard because their game is that way. But if you're a hunter and you like to shoot long range, but then sometimes you want to blast a critter or a can or whatever your jam is in close, the RMR with a 45 degree offset makes the most amount of sense. You can zero this at about 15 yards. You got quick target acquisition from 5 to 15 with a little bit of slight holdover. I recommend a 2 MOA dot. I think it's the probably the most precise out of all of them. And one thing that's really great about running a 45 degree offset as opposed to running an RMR on top is that if you run one on top here, on top of your scope, you have to break cheek weld. So you're here, you got your face down on the gun, and in order to see the RMR on top, you have to break cheek weld. With it on the 45 degree, all you gotta do is tilt the gun slightly. You still got cheek weld, your face is still lined up where it needs to be, you pick up your target on your RMR, and you blast it. Now, have you guys ever been hunting when you see something and you can go to look for it in your scope and it's tunneling a little bit and you can't find it and you kind of like pick your head up, break cheek weld, you look over the scope and you try to line up and you go back and it's gone again. When you run a 45 degree RMR, you put this on the target, you find it on the red dot, you turn it straight because you never broke cheek weld, you're already here in your diopter and everything's set and you'll have much quicker target acquisition, even with long range scopes. So that's why I pick that setup. Um, last thing I wanna talk about is the trigger. Now this is a combat trigger. This is not um, your typical air gun trigger. Let me make sure this gun is empty. There you go. I'm leaving the magazine in just because if I uh, pull it, the transfer port will fly out. So just so you guys see, it's clear. Magazine is empty. All chambers are clear. Okay. When you're talking about a combat trigger, this is not your ounce trigger where you sit on a bench, put blinders on, and focus, squeeze, release, release, put just the pad of your finger in there and let it surprise you. That's not how you shoot this gun. This gun's shot like an AR-15 or like an AK-47. The grip is small, the grip is small, so that you can bury the trigger in here, your finger in the trigger. Don't, don't sit here like this and try to feather with just the pad of your finger like your dad taught you to shoot your 22 long rifle when you were trying to be a sniper. When you shoot a gun like this, shoot it like a pistol. That means pull more finger, put more finger in the trigger. Get your arm in line with it, squeeze the towel, which means bring both elbows down together, squeeze, ring the towel out, put more trigger in there, because when you put more finger in the trigger, it's a lever. As opposed to pulling this way, off to the side. That's okay with a trigger that's ounces and it surprises you and you're not going to make the gun walk one way or another because it's so light. When you have a, a trigger like this that's much more like an AR-15, you want to put your hand in deeper so that all of your 
radius and ulna are in line with the trigger and you want to pull it like you would a pistol. More finger in the trigger and your gun will not walk as much. So if you want tighter groups, shoot longer range with the Leshy 2. Treat it like you would a 1911 or a Glock. More finger in the trigger. Get it past the first little uh, fold in your finger right there. Get it in there. Get it in line. And everything will then come together for you. It's a little different. Just remember, variety is the spice of life, guys. Not everything's got to be a match precision trigger, especially on a gun like this. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me an email at sales at Ed Gun West. And uh, make sure you give Ed a shout out for just building the coolest air rifle of all time. Honestly, this is the first air rifle that I've ever owned. That reminded me of my firearms, and I think you guys are going to dig it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.